Right, so this, this problem is actually quite a technical and math, well, mathematical problem. And up until Houdini 18, this was actually sort of technical to fix, but in Houdini 18, they introduced a new sweep node, which makes this a lot easier to fix. And I actually went ahead and recorded it the old way because I wasn't aware of the new, well, the new way to, to do this. But in Houdini 18, there's a new sweep node that takes care of a lot of this for you. Uh, so what I did, Initially, so if I go back in my seaweed, is I have this wrangle here, and let's go to our first view. Let's just copy and paste this wrangle in here. Let's play. So you see, this fixes the uh, the problem. But of course, like this, this uses an, an orient, which is a quaternion, and a quaternion is a mathematical construct, which is a little bit tricky to understand. So you can Google it if you want to, and then be super confused, and then come back to this tutorial. But essentially, it's a different way of um, of sort of rotating uh, well geometry. Uh, and it sort of it fixes stuff like gimbal lock and stuff, and it, it's it's just a better way of representing well, orientation. So what I did here is I just created a vector, so just a vector direction, and I created a rotation. Uh, so what it will do is it will the rotate, and uh, so the rotation will just be random based on the primitive number in degrees, because by default it will just be zero to one and that will be radians, and if I put it to degrees, then it will just be that. And then if I make in quaternion, I can say rotate around that vector. And then it has a quaternion, and then it will sort of just keep a specific rotation for each curve. Um, so then they won't start moving weirdly, but they will just be oriented in the sort of, well, in the orient direction. So the geometry that generates is not, it's like it's a little bit stretched out, but that, that's perfectly fine for, for what we were doing. But there's actually a way to not use quaternions uh, inside of Houdini 18. So that's what I'm gonna show you. By the way, the random is because if I didn't do that, then they would all be facing the same direction. Like if I were to say, uh, oh, uh, oh. I see, uh, I actually put them in the, no, I didn't. So if I didn't do the uh, do the rotation um, randomly, like if I just said road is zero, then you see you get something like this, where they're sort of, and it's looking really weird. But if you sort of randomize it, so why can't I even do this thing? Oh, yeah, there we go. Then they sort of randomly orient a little bit more, so then it looks better. Anyway, so let's not do that. If you want to do this, you can do this. Um, but like the more technical stuff like this with rainbows will probably get in much later. So not in this course, maybe in a later course. But let's 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 fix it the way that's that you can now fix it inside of Houdini 18 without getting too technical. All right. Let's just remove this thing. So this is new sweep note in Rooney 18. If you're still on 70.5, you need to do it the other way that I showed you. So just type over the wrangle or just copy and paste it from the file that you can download from <coughs> timvanhelsdinger.com for <coughs> Patreon supporters only. Uh, <laughs> sorry for the shill. But uh, anyway, so then you can, uh, well, there's, there's this new wrangle here. And this thing basically requires a couple of things. And also this doesn't necessarily need a second input. You can also put this to, for example, to ribbon. Here you can see we get ribbons, but we still have to flip. Let's just do the line for now. So this thing requires us to have two vectors. So let's do attribute create. Let's put it in there and it needs an up vector called up. And let's make it a uh, vector. Let's give it a direction. Let's call it, let's make it, uh, let's make it Y up for now. And we need a normal as well. So let's give it a N. Uh, let's put it in this direction, made a vector. Right, so you can see, 
something already happened in that right now they're sort of they're waving but in the same sort of uniform direction that we had before right before we did the random rotation with the orient but with slightly better geometry but the sweep here has and by the way this has like settings as well we can tweak but this has thing has like options so for a for example apply roll and twists so i could say put some roll and maybe put a, like a full twist now you can see the problem is fixed but we didn't need to do any of the quaternion stuff so that's probably a lot easier so this is only if you're on houdini 18 or up but if you are, then just use that, and else you can use just use the uh, with the quaternion stuff. So uh, yeah, let's let's round up our uh, our little seaweed thing. What we could do just for visualization is maybe extrude it out. And when we're going to render this, we are going to let Redshift generate maybe these uh, these strips. If you're going to do that, by the way, so. I'm going to go over that later. If we're going to let Redshift generate these strips, then we do need to do it with the Orient. So keep that in mind. If we're going to let render time, uh, if we're going to do render time sweeping, which we probably are, then we do need to do it with this Quaternion thing. So I might get back to this later once we start populating the entire scene. But I just wanted to show you both ways of sort of building this thing. Because like if we're, because probably doing render time sweeps will probably be just a uh, just a better sort of well a more efficient way to do this because it will well do it at render time. But just so keep it in mind that you have two sweeps, and there's two ways to do it. And the file that you can download will have both the tutorial file and the seaweed file in here. So two ways to sort of uh, yeah to sort of sweep. And maybe, maybe uh, let me, okay, let me just show you one quick thing, by the way, about the Quaternion before we sort of round this up, this thing. I was talking about the rotations. Let me show you with the rotations. Let's say if I make a channel float here, and as you see, I already had one before because I already tried that. And if I then, let's create slider, because apparently I didn't name it correctly. You can see what happens, like if I rotate them, you see they're sort of rotating the things, but what I was doing instead is doing that randomly to get the thing. So anyway, I forgot to discuss that. So, okay, let's go back to our original thing. All right, so we have the sweep thing happening here. And again, we need to orient later when we're going to do the render thing. But for now, let's just give it a color. Just like make it just for just for funsies. We don't really necessarily need the color in the view part, but it just looks better. And let's play. And then I guess we can make an output. And then that's uh, that's our seaweed. So uh, actually moves quite nice, as you can see. Kind of like the way it's it's moving. Actually, I think I like this one better than the than the other one. And of course, this whole thing is procedural because it's Houdini. So we could go in here and we could reduce the amount of secondaries or increase it, make it a lot. All that stuff is just procedural. So the main takeaway from this tutorial right now is that we are using this, let me open a geometry spreadsheet. So you can go that, do that under like plus new panel inspectors geometry spreadsheet. So the main takeaway is that we have a curve view attribute, which we generated on the resample. And again, you can also generate attributes like this yourself. It doesn't necessarily need to be done like this. So, but we are using this and then we are 
basically using that inside every wrangle to influence our noises, our densities, and everything. So that's the main takeaway from this part of the tutorial. So you just sort of understand what, you, what we've been doing. And this way of thinking and this way of building stuff is the main thing you're constantly doing in Houdini. You're sort of making attributes uh, or taking attributes from somewhere and then applying them in a certain way. And honestly, you can do a lot with just this type of stuff. And that's what this course is about in general, is that you can do a lot with just procedural cool techniques without doing any simulation. And once you start getting into simulation, so in a later course that we're going to do, um, then we can apply all these attributes over time and then we do super cool simulation stuff based on these attributes. But that's something for later. Oh, and one more thing that we might want to do uh, is before we wrap this up, is at render time, we probably need velocity. So I haven't talked about that yet, but you need, so velocity, uh, so these points are moving, but in order to get motion blur, so right now they're just moving, but the pro like the renderer doesn't really have any way to tell like how to blur them because they don't really have a, uh, well, have a velocity to them. So some renderers do that do that by the by themselves. I think some of the latest Redshift builds now also try to interpolate that themselves. Uh, didn't choose to do that, but in general, what we want to do is maybe is add velocity ourselves. So if something has a consistent point count, so if the point count doesn't change and it doesn't happen in our case, so this is 1,088 points. If we go in here, still 1,088 points. If I go in here, 1,088 points. Then we can use something called a trail swap. A trail swap is quite cool. If I just put it in here, what the default will do is it will just create a copy of the previous um, frame. So if I do this, you can see I get a trail. If I completely increase this, you can see I get two, like I got a super weird jittery thing. So that's, that's pretty cool in itself. And of course you could sweep this and then get crazy stuff. Uh, anyway, what we can also put this to is to just keep trail length to two and then put it to compute velocity. So right now you see nothing really happens, but what happens in our geometry spreadsheet is we get a new attribute called V. V stands for velocity. So anywhere in on point for point attributes, V is for the velocity. And it's basically just a vector. So you can visualize it with this little button here. So display point rails. And sometimes it won't, ah, you can see it there to make my background dark. So if you press D in the viewport, get this thing, you can go here, see a little bit better. So you can see there's these vectors now on my lines that are pointing basically to the position of the previous point, or like where, where that, that point was on the previous position. So that way it can sort of, uh, like, and that vector will be used for motion blur. In volumes, they uh, like the velocity is called vel, so it's a little bit different. But we'll we'll get more into that once we get into the uh, into the, the simulation, uh, well, tutorials later. Um, so the point count needs to stay consistent for this. If it's not, then we could use something called an ID, which will be consistent. But ID is something we'll get more into later in a later course when we're going to talk about simulation, because for now that we don't really need it. So. If, we, if I just put it on there, you can see if I sweep, it's still on here. So then so the, the new points just inherit it. And then when I poly extrude, they still inherit it. So now I have, well, I have velocities, which I can use for motion blur. So that was the part about the seaweed. I hope you found it interesting. So in the next part, we're going to start building our squid. And that part will be by far the longest section of this whole tutorial thing because the squid is it's not necessarily complicated but it's a lot of elements uh, and the squid was also what sort of brought me to make this actual course so i gave a workshop a while ago where i well, where i was talking about these these things with like the noises being driven by attributes and there i made some simple thing with like tentacles and the students there seemed to really enjoy the look of that thing and it just looked sort of like alien or like squid like so when i wanted to sort of make an actual full course i was like maybe it's cool starting point to sort of do a course and like 
because that was just a really cool, like a really good thing to sort of explain the core concepts of like procedural stuff in Houdini and like, well, having stuff animated by noises. So the squid will actually be, uh, well, be the main part of the, of the course. So we're going to go into that. And then after that, we're going to talk more about more asset generation. And then once we have some of the assets, we're going to, well, talk, uh, talk about lighting and shading and stuff. But first let's dive into the whole thing with the, uh, with the squid. So super excited for that. Hopefully I'll see you there. Don't forget as always to like the video. So, um, uh, yeah, see you in the next one, guys.